In my previous lecture, I discussed experimental research uh, with a focus on its definition, its characteristics, and the general process involved in experimental research. This presentation is um, actually going beyond that and discussing some of the main types of experimental research. Generally, experimental research in social sciences um, has three main types uh, and they are called the pre-experimental research designs, the true experimental research designs and the quasi-experimental research designs. Um, this particular presentation is aimed at briefly describing the what and how of pre-experimental designs and true experimental designs. So let us begin this presentation with a definition and description of the pre-experimental research design. Experimental design with intervention only for the experimental group. Um, so as we know that um, generally in experimental designs, there is the concept of intervention, which actually means that giving treatment to the experimental groups. In the pre-experimental research design, what happens is that the experimental the intervention is actually focused on the experimental group. So generally there are again there are some subtypes of um, this particular research design. The first one is called the one-shot case study experimental design or pre-experimental design. So in this one what happens is that um, we examine the effect of an intervention on a single group. So we take a single group, for example, in the context of um, educational research, you might take a single class and you might give them um, a particular experimental treatment, such as you might use a particular research method, uh, sorry, teaching method uh, to teach that particular class and then um, try to evaluate or examine the effect of that particular teaching method or treatment in terms of learning outcomes. So that, this could be a simple example of this one-shot case study type of experimental design. Then we have the second type in this category is the one group pre-test post-test design. So what is this? Here we take a single group and this single group is given a pretest, this which is followed then by intervention or treatment and then a post test. So again giving example from the um, educational settings, we could say that if you take a class um, and then you actually give them a pretest. Uh, let's say in a particular subject or on a particular context uh, uh, concept in a particular subject, then you teach them with a particular um, teaching method that we, we would call treatment or intervention. And then a post test is taken to see the effect of this particular research method. So this might, <clears throat> this seems a bit um, more comprehensive and perhaps better design in comparison to the one-shot design because here we have already taken a pre-test and so we could compare the results of the pre-test and the post-test and possible change in, let's say, in learning outcomes might be attributed to, uh, to the treatment or the intervention. The third one is the static group comparison. Um, here what happens is that there is intervention to the experimental group first um, and then a similar group is selected, uh, a group similar to the group, uh, to the experimental group that has been given um, treatment or that has been given intervention 
and then both groups are given a post test and so on the basis of the results of the post test uh, we might be in a position to decide whether the intervention was what was the impact of the intervention so that's about pre experimental research designs now we will discuss true experimental research designs so uh, again let us begin with the definition of the true experimental research design what happens is that in a true experimental research design um, it is um, a, a more authentic type of experimental research design and that's why it's called true experimental research designs the reason is that it involves randomization um, which is an important aspect of experimentation um, and control so a random assignment of the subjects to the experimental group and to the control group is an important aspect of the true experimental research design and in this case in true experimental research design there is at least one experimental group and one control group and so you can see that these measures make it a more reliable and more authentic research design because there is more control and there is a random assignment um, of the subjects in the experimental and the control group and that actually means that there is more objectivity in this particular research design this research design or the true experimental research design actually has um, three other uh, types and three of those types are the prominent types and these include the pre-test post-test control group design the Solomon 4 group design and the post-test only control group design we will briefly discuss what these three types of designs are how are they different and what is involved in the processes of these three types of research designs so first of all the true experimental design as you can see has been categorized into these three types um, the two groups the four groups involved and the two groups involved so in the first one experimental and control groups are involved the pre-test post-test control group design basically has experimental and control group both these groups the experimental group um, and the control group are given a pre-test then the experimental group is given intervention and then both groups are given a post-test so let us again give an example from the educational context um, what happens is that um, a class let's say a class is divided into two groups one is called the experimental and the other one is called the control group and the subjects are assigned on the random basis to these two groups then one of the groups let's say a class of 40 is divided into 20 or a class of 80 is divided into 40 40 students then one of the then both of these groups are given a pretest on a particular um, con uh, concept such as let's say a concept in mathematics um, uh, for example set theory or something like that and then one of the groups that is the experimental group is given intervention so that group is actually taught uh, through a, part, a different teaching method while the other the control group might be just taught through the traditional method towards the end of that intervention uh, we again gave a post test to both groups and see possible differences in their courses that will tell us whether the intervention has made any significant uh, difference between the, the scores of the two groups so this will be a simple example of the 
pre test post test control group design the four group design the solomon four group design actually is involves a bit more complexity and a bit more control and that's why it's a bit more it might be considered a bit uh, more authentic process of experimental research so the four groups there are four groups involved all groups receive post test um first group receives pre test and experimental in intervention and a post test the second group uh, receives pre test and post test and the third group receives experimental intervention and a post test while the fourth group receives only the post test so you can see that the post test is the, the case with all the groups but all these other groups differ in terms of um intervention and in terms of pre test and uh, remember that these four groups are equal groups and so there is random assignment uh, of subjects as well as a result this more complex uh, type of research actually uh, of experimental research actually helps in controlling extraneous variables that might be the case in um other less complex uh, and less rigorous research designs and as a result this particular research designs design uh, the four group comparison might lead to more authentic uh, results in terms of deciding whether an intervention or whether an independent variable has actually caused a change in the dependent variable so um again you can think of the educational context in terms of dividing a group into four and then um giving these these four types of uh, after creating these four types of uh, groups you can get all of those four groups to, through this particular process uh, which will ultimately lead to um whether the the hypotheses that that you have um are accepted or re or rejected uh, in a more authentic way and in a more rigorous way and then the last one in this particular research design is the two groups designs so there is the first group which receives experimental intervention uh and 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 the the, the two groups design um, actually is the post test only control group design here the post test is actually only given to the control group so what happens is that the first group receives experimental intervention and a post test while the second group is given only the post test the second group is is actually the control group it only receives the post test while the first group receives the experimental intervention and the post test test so you you see that there is no pre test involved in this particular research design that's why it is called the post test only control group design and again you can see that this is this seems less rigorous um in comparison to the four group um or the solomon four group research design so all of these research designs the pre experimental research designs the true experimental research designs then the various sub categories of these research designs have their value um in uh, when when it comes to conducting practical research in in practical field so for example in many cases it might not be possible to go for complex rigorous research designs uh which involve more intervention in kind of real life situations in that case a more complex true experimental research designs might not be possible um and less rigorous designs might be possible so um although uh, these different research designs have value in their own ways uh, because of practical considerations 
if one type of research design is not possible or if more rigorous type of research design is not possible in a, in a practical sense, uh, one might then um, depend on the less rigorous re, uh, experimental research designs. There are, these are some of the sources that you can uh, actually refer to for further um, enhancing your knowledge related to the experimental research design. In a coming um, session, I would like to discuss the third type of, uh, uh, of research design, which is called the quasi-experimental research design. Thank you very much for your time. If you have questions and comments, please share those questions and comments. Take care. Bye.